Okay, I'll send that over to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Welcome back to another episode of Mount Point Three Garage. Uh, today we're going to be clearancing the block for the 347 stroker motor and in the middle of this process you're going to see that I determine that there is a major failure in this uh, rotating kit that I purchased and uh, I had to kind of stop and take a breather and uh, finish this project because in the past what's happened is that uh, something has gone wrong and I kind of lose my motivation and then a couple of months go by before I tend to deal with things. Uh, so I'm not going to do that on this build from here on. Uh, something failed. I went ahead and finished the clearancing. Now I have to deal with the problem. So here we go. This is how I clearanced my 5.0 97 Explorer motor to fit my 347 stroker. All right, so I'm going to take my mains off. Then I'm just gonna put bearings in there and just kind of fit up the crank loose just so that I can get the just so that I can get the uh, marks made on the cylinder for where I need to cut for the clearancing. Uh, and then I'll go back and actually do this correctly and look at uh, clearance and all that stuff on the bearings to the crank. All right, now we're going to set our, main, our bearings in. Obviously, most of you know, just make sure you put the notch where the notch is supposed to go, and that enables you to know which one goes where. And essentially, the bearings with the oil galley opening like that uh, go in the bottom. And you'll see a tab that matches up with the tab right there. The Then I'll go in all the way correctly. We'll just give them a little tap. And that'll get them set in there. Now that we got those set in, we're going to do the same thing with our caps. And just one at a time, one at a time, put the bearings in there. Then I'm going to put a little bit of assembly lube on the bearings just to make sure I don't accidentally uh, scratch them. And I'm going to do the same thing on the caps. Cap bearings. Doesn't have to be much. I'm not torquing them down at this point. Um, I'm going to lubricate them again uh, before I torque them down. But even then, we're talking a few thousandths. Uh, space so any extra grease that you put in there is just going to squeeze out anyway. I'm also not putting in the rear main seal at this point either because I don't want to. Oh, my glove got caught. Don't get your glove caught in your crank. All right. All of this block is going to get washed again after I grind it. Uh, so I don't want to get any materials in anything. I also don't have the freeze plugs in for that same issue. I don't want metal to get trapped in anywhere. I'm going to blow it all out. Alright, same thing here. I'm going to put a little... Okay, and I'm going to start with the center cap, but I'm not going to torque them all the way down. I'm just going to basically tighten them enough to where the crank will spin truly, but not without a lot of pressure. So uh, make sure that your uh, main cap uh, is in on number three right there when you're putting that in to match up with the cap down below and that your arrow is pointing towards the front of the block. Then repeat the process for the other mains. All right, now I've essentially finger tightened these. I can at least spin the crank here pretty freely, so that's a good sign. Now we're gonna go ahead and start, uh, I'm gonna start on uh, one and two 
and then work my way down essentially marking them all pull the crank back out um, clean everything off so that I don't have metal sticking to any surfaces uh, and then start grinding all right next I'm going to place a connecting rod in uh, in the bore with the bearings and everything on it and then uh, I'm going to rotate with my hand in the center of keep my hand in the center of where the uh, piston bore is and rotate until it hits and then I was making marks just outside of the corners and then rotating it back through the other way again keeping the the rod in the middle kind of similar to where it would be with a piston and then doing the same thing coming back there and marking those so I can get a good idea of where it's at and then also how deep do I think I need it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut out all, I'm going to cut out all of that black uh, as well and, uh, and then try it again and see where we're at. Now I'm going to switch this over to one and then I'm going to go back over to uh, two and six and then so forth and so on down the line make these marks and then I'm going to start grinding. Let's keep going buddy. Do not let this slow you down. You're good. You're good. You can make this happen, bro. You can make this happen. All right, now that I have marked every cylinder, I'm going to go ahead and pull the mains off and start cutting. Let's get this crank out of here. I'm also going to pop out the bearings uh, so that I don't get some, um, I don't get metal in them. Mop off any grease or anything that might attract metal shavings. Now I'm going to turn this down so that the metal and the stone will fall into this valley and down here and not spread into the rest of the block. At least that's what I'm hoping. And then the second thing I'm going to do is, uh, you can see I've got my stone point on there, which is where I'm going to use on this block. We'll see how much we'll take that off. Uh, but I'll have a torque setting and a speed setting. Well, I'm going to put it on the torque setting just to keep the speed down. And hopefully that will uh, also lessen the amount of grit that I'm getting all over. So let's try this. I'm getting a pretty good, uh, pretty good divot there. It's coming along. Try it a little bit faster and see if it helps more. Oh yeah, so the faster speed, I don't think I'm throwing dust anywhere. Uh, but it is cutting it better. Now I think that is going to clear it. Looking at my mark that I put down there on the bottom. I don't have to go too deep. Uh, but I wanted it deep enough. I think I'm going to pitch it a little bit more. So after uh, grinding in this for a little bit, and that stone really does a good job. Uh, it just takes a while and I'm going through quite a bit of that stone. So I went and grabbed just an old uh, rotating file bit. It's just a cheap uh, file bit that probably came with some kit. Um, and uh, turned it on high speed. And actually it's cutting through the metal quite a bit. So I switched now to shaping and getting the depth with this and then finishing it off with the stone uh, to make it a little bit uh, smoother uh, and, and get the transition in there too. So let's check this out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, we're gonna clean it up just a little bit. <clears throat> Now we've got uh, the crank back in, center mains in. I really didn't put any of the other ones in because I don't think you need that in order to do this. 
uh, and we're just testing uh, the first bank one through four uh, to make sure that we are going to be able to clear clearance them. I did mock up a rod taped up underneath it to make sure that I have as much clearance there as I do with a standard bearing or at least close so I can get close to this and check it and then I'm going to keep the attitude of the rod, uh, the back of the rod uh, to the cylinder so I can see how the what the clearance is going to be like and then as I spin it you can see I'm getting just the right amount of clearance and the peak is about right where I need it on that one. So we'll pull this out, we'll test, test this one here. You can see just getting the right clearance there. Perfect there. Spin this around, come back over here. And so I'm getting pretty good clearance. I probably didn't need to clearance them as much as I did. So that clears and then come on over to this one and we're clearing there as well. Right, the attitude of the bearing just like it would normally be, just like that. Getting just enough clearance to not be worried about it. So that was successful, now we're gonna do this side. And then once we get the engine um, mocked up, put together with the actual pistons and rods in there, we'll double check to make sure we have the right clearance, but it looks good. Okay, now fast forward a little bit and I did get all eight finished. So I clearanced out uh, where the oil uh, pump is. I clearanced out the side of the oil pump here because it looks like that it's going to contact uh, just a little bit. So I went ahead and I clearanced that just a little bit and then I got all eight cylinders exactly where they needed to be cleared. And uh, after putting um, a rod cap in there and, and rotating it, uh, I have plenty of clearance on these. I might have clearance to maybe a little bit more than I needed to, but I don't think that's going to hurt anything. And then I also chamfered the inside just a hair uh, so that it wouldn't catch the piston skirt coming in and out. Um, and then took a uh, just a real light, uh, like I think it was a, a 280 grit sandpaper, and just went over it just a little bit just to make sure that uh, it's uh, completely smooth all the way around and I couldn't be happier with this. Can't wait to actually get my rotating kit in there a hundred percent and get this thing buttoned up. All right now we are done with that part of it. I am super stoked. Um, I'm going to make a video next on the problem that I found with this rotating kit. I'll also tell you the manufacturer that I went with which may surprise you and uh, the results that I got, which actually may not surprise you, uh, but I'm gonna fix it and it's gonna get going. So the next videos will be uh, my video on how my rotating kit uh, is kind of a dud at this point. Uh, also in the next two, you're gonna see a FAR 70W transmission rebuild and a Dana 20 rebuild as well as the adapter the adapting of the FAR 70W and the Dana 20 kit as well. Uh, then we're going to get on the heads and get the heads rebuilt. I bought a new spring kit for it. We're also going to uh, port the heads uh, so that we can get a little bit more airflow. And then we're going to work on the intake and we're going to do a little bit of porting on the intake as well. Uh, I'm not going to do a ton on this right now. I just want to get just a little bit more airflow through this engine seeing as we put a, a stroker um, crank and pistons in this. That's a wrap for Mod Point 3 Garage. If you haven't subscribed, please do. We're having a lot of fun here and uh, we really appreciate you joining. Check out Mod3Garage.com for nothing more than just a little bit of information. And we'll see you in the next episode.